Hi, in this video I'm going to be discussing the rational root theorem and as you can remember from class this is the theorem that gives us a short list of candidates or possible zeros for this particular polynomial function. If we could look at the graph we could easily see where those occurred and if they occurred uh, but this is pure, purely from an algebraic standpoint so to get those candidates or those possible zeros you're going to take the factors of your constant and place them over the factors of your leading coefficient. In this case this is a very simple problem because these two numbers are very low and that's going to mean that we're going to have less numbers to choose from. So let's start with the two. Factors of two are one and two. We want to include the positive and negative values of that so that's actually four different numbers. The factors of the leading coefficient are one so that gives us plus and minus one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create as many different combinations out of these two numbers as we possibly can and you're going to see that it's going to be a very short list. Um, starting with the one, we're going to have one over one which is one and then two over one which is two. And of course we want to include the positive and negative values of this because again if you take negative 1 over 1 that gives you negative 1 and negative 2 over 2 1 that gives you negative 2. So here's our possible choices of possible rational zeros. Now to test those you're going to use synthetic division. So I want to set this up removing all the variables out of this problem and setting it up here. And now I have four different numbers that I can put into this. And again, this is just simply a matter of random choice. You really have no idea which one to choose, so just start with one of them. I will start with two, and I will drop down the first number and start multiplying. Multiply two times one gives me two. Add those together, I get one. Two times one again, add those together, that gives me four. Two times four, that's eight add those together and that gives me six. Now this last number indicates that I have not found a zero. If I did find a zero this would wind up being a zero and the reason being is because when you find a factor there's never a remainder. For example 12 divided by 2 no remainder. 6 divided by 2 no remainder and so on and so forth. So we're looking for that number to be zero. So what that means is I'm going to have to start all over again. I'm going to have to choose a different candidate. And so I'm going to remove that two. I'm going to go back to this list and I guess I'll choose one. Uh, one times one is one. Add those together you get zero. One times zero is zero. Add those together you get two. One times two is two and add those together and I get zero. So I have found a zero of this function um, and it happens to be the number one. Now keep in mind this is a third degree equation which means there might be three. We just ruled out one of those candidates. Now what you can do to see if there's any others is you can continue this testing procedure with the other two numbers that we haven't used. Or you can rewrite this as uh, a polynomial and I got this back from these coefficients. They happen to be the coefficients of my um, answer and you always take one degree less and that's why that's x squared. We have 0x plus 2. Now this is a factor so if I set that equal to 0 and solve I can see that I'm going to get um, negative 2 on the right hand side and then when I take the square root here, I'm going to get um, plus and minus the square root of negative 2, which is an imaginary number. And in this particular lesson, I'm looking for rational zeros, and these do not qualify for that. So we are finished with this problem, and the answer that we got from this is the number 1. That is the rational zero, so x equals 1. For number two, we're going to do it the exact same way. So very quickly, I'm going to take factors of six, which are one, two, three, and six, and place them over the factors of one, which again are one. And again, we're going to be taking the positive and negative values of this. And then we're going to be creating a list of numbers out of the combinations of uh, these two numbers. Again, it's going to be very easy because anything divided by one is itself. So um, my numbers are going to be plus and minus one, two, three, and six. That's this time that's a possible a list of eight possible candidates because you have the positive values and the negative values. And again, now I'm going to set the synthetic division problem up 
and um, choose one of these candidates at random and um, just go from there. I guess uh, once again I'm going to start with the number uh, 1. I like starting with the low numbers. 1 times 1 is 1. It gives me 1. Add those together I get 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Add those together I get 6. 1 times 6 is negative is 6 and I add those together and I get 0. So um, in, in this case 1 is a rational 0. So now I'm going to continue this process because I need to make sure that there's not any others. Um, so to do that what you want to do is you can continue on with this synthetic process or you can rewrite this as a um, uh, back into equation form and that's going to give us x squared plus 5x plus 6. Again that degree is one less than what we started with. And then let's take a look at this. It looks like it is an equation that can be factored. Um, factors of 6 that add up to 5 would be 2 and 3. And now if I set those equal to 0 and solved for those values of x, x would equal negative 2 and negative 3. So all of my zeros combined, if I bring that 1 back down here, I have three rational zeros this time in, in this problem and they are 1, negative 2, and negative 3. And that concludes this video.